Hello there everybody, my name is Bloomer Brown and today I am playing a little bit of Farming Simulator 17. Um, that in itself is something of an equivocal statement uh, because uh, this game has become my addiction over the past couple of weeks. Um, I'd say I've probably spent most of my time playing on this map, which is of course the Bally Moon Castle map uh, created by Mapper's Paradise uh, for the mod contest. Um, a contest that they actually won the category for uh, best map and uh, it's well deserved in my opinion there is so much going on here it's a really detailed map uh, we've got lots of little interactive things uh, which kind of really draw you into it um, and the map itself is based in County Carnot in Ireland uh, so it's kind of an obvious choice for an Irish YouTuber uh, to do a let's play on I mean there are other maps um, based in Ireland like Drumard Farm but this one uh, has really grabbed me and it's probably my favorite at the moment um, Now if you know me, you'll know that I like my mods and uh, I have got quite a few installed on this game at the moment um, Obviously the map itself is a mod and uh, we are also running seasons um, Which the map isn't fully compatible with at the moment, but there'll be more on that later um, so this is our main yard right here um, and I suppose we better start by setting up uh, the seasons mod um, so if you're familiar with the mod you'll kind of be familiar with this screen um, it's early spring obviously so we haven't reached germination temperature for everything there are some people that seem to think that you can only plant once the soil reaches this temperature uh, which isn't actually true these are the germination temperatures and uh, these are the uh, planting times, uh, the little green bars here and the yellow bars are the harvesting. Though I think if you planted a uh, wheat late in the autumn, once the soil is kind of dropped below about 5 degrees so that it won't germinate over the winter and wither, uh, you'll probably get a harvest uh, a little bit earlier in the year. Um, the only thing I would say is that there's only a few of the plants that um, can actually be planted in the winter like the oilseed radish, uh, the poplar, uh, the wheat and the barley and uh, the canola or the oilseed rape. Uh, planting sunflowers or potatoes or something like that in winter obviously uh, doesn't work. Um, so we've got our economy thing here and we're going to set up uh, the season itself. So we're going to be probably playing with about six days and I'm going to deactivate the snow. Um, firstly because there's not a lot of snow in Ireland um, in the winter and secondly because as I say the map isn't fully compatible with seasons. Uh, there are some custom textures in there uh, on the trees especially. Um, so some of these trees will not lose their leaves in winter because obviously seasons doesn't know what to do in terms of replacing the textures as the seasons move on. Um, but the main problem is with the snow. Um, it tends to accumulate inside the sheds and um, it kind of uh, messes with things like um, the spillage from the feed of the cattle will end up um, not spawning uh, until the snow has melted and then you'll end up with a, a mountain of stuff to clear in the spring once the thaw comes. So um, I'm disabling the snow, it's not unrealistic. I'm going to overlook uh, some of the trees not uh, changing uh, colour during the uh, winter months. Um, in Ireland we do have a lot of ivy and stuff growing in the hedgerows and um, basically it's uh, you know, it's not unheard of to have uh, some greenery uh, even in the middle of winter. Uh, Oh, we're going to go and look at it. Excellent, that's one of a hundred. Uh, I thought they were persistent across the maps actually there for a while. Um, or maybe I had just gotten in and um, grabbed quite a few of them uh, while I was setting things up. Um, so anyway, uh, we've got our season set up and the next thing I suppose we need to take a look at is our finances uh, because we have got to get this uh, farm up and running and um, we have actually only got one field which is down towards the end of the yard here I'm actually passing through uh, without remarking on some of the cool little features that are in this and some of the interactive stuff um, some of the coolest stuff is uh, on this yard in particular and um, so for example we've got our cattle here um, this is our load point but to actually expose our load point uh, and our little trigger, we've got to uh, trigger this switch and let the cows in and out of the pen, uh, which I think is incredibly cool. It's something that they didn't really need to do, but it adds so much to the map. Um, so yes, fields, we actually only start out with one 
that being this one over here, which is actually pretty decent. Um, strange thing is there doesn't seem to be any collision on that pole up there. Uh, I don't actually know if you can make it out. Uh, my graphics are set uh, very, very low indeed. Uh, I'm actually playing on laptop still. Um, so this map is probably going to look kind of terrible and we're probably going to get a lot of lag but it's not a reflection of the game or the map itself um it's more just a vestige of the hardware that i'm playing on um okay so money uh let's see what we've actually got in storage um now i'm looking at the um soybeans i think not something i think that's grown a hell of a lot in ireland um but the price is pretty decent at the moment out at the transport and I'm thinking that maybe we should go and take that and sell it. Um, we also need to take a little bit of a look at our equipment. Um, we do have a harvester up here um, which is parked in the shed here. Um, I think I'm going to hold on to it though. Um, we'll probably end up selling it, growing some um, oil seed rape. Um, for uh, a little bit of a cash crop down in that field. I'm going to try and get the other two fields that are around as well, uh, just around the farm. Uh, it's kind of strange that we don't start with them. I would kind of say that they should be part, field 19 and 17 should be part of the farm starting up, but it's not a huge ask to actually buy these fields anyway. So we're going to try and sort that out. Yes, our equipment. Um, Another cool thing is uh, this little feed mix station, um, which pops out like that. Um, I don't think it actually accepts round bales. I've been trying to feed them into it and I really don't think it does. I think it just accepts uh, loose material and um, square bales. Um, judging by the look of that anyway, it would take a square bale. And the round bales just kind of sit on it and hop around and they don't seem to, um, it doesn't seem to accept them at all. So I uh, will probably be focusing on square bales and maybe uh, doing some silage in the pit for cows but that's a long way off uh, it'll probably be in the summer before we'll be uh, building up to that or maybe late summer early autumn so the rest of our equipment is over here well apart from that uh, pickup uh, which we're going to sell I don't really have a use for it um, I do have the uh, van mod installed as well which adds uh, something that resembling a, a transit van to the game and I may get that but um, I don't think we need that and for now we can get around uh, pretty easily with the tractors and I don't think we're going to get a lot of time off the tractors either. Um, we are going to be um, spending quite a time using them. Uh, so we've got two trailers or tipper trailers. Um, we've got a case with a front loader and uh, I think it's just weights as at the front. Yeah, it's just weights. Um, actually trying to remember some of the stuff that we have I do think this wind roar here is on lease at the moment um, unless we do own it um, no we don't and it's costing us uh, a bit of money I think um, to be leasing it I think it's somewhere in the region of a thousand euros a day uh, so we're kind of going to get rid of that pretty soon and uh, we've got a little cultivator here uh, that's kind of useful and we've also got our Pottinger um, forage wagon, or uh, nice Massey. Uh, I like this tractor a lot. Actually, it's going to be my kind of go-to tractor. It's a, it seems a small one and a light one, but it's you know it's kind of handy around for yard work and that kind of thing. Uh, this little seeding machine is going to go as well. In fact, I might actually hook that onto the tractor now. Um, so uh, let's get into Cavio. I'm going to bring up my controls for a moment because I've got another uh, mod that's in beta at the moment. Uh, I think it's developed by someone called Mowgli. Um, and it's basically designed uh, for people like me who steer with a keyboard and it's configurable. Uh, it lowers the sensitivity of the keys so that you can kind of steer and I'm probably actually um, shaking the hell out of the microphone at the moment. Um, it has been a while since I've made a video um, and you have no idea how many times it took me to actually um, get that intro out of the way uh, so we're going to hide that again and we're going to start up and uh, we have got manual attach and things like that installed um, I'm just going to pull over there I do like driving in cab view and it does make um, hooking on to stuff uh, far far easier as well um, actually it's probably 
more important that we get rid of that wind roar since it is leased. Um, but I don't think I want that cedar because it doesn't spread fertilizer and it's actually quite small. Now I think the one that we're get, going to probably end up getting uh, is about the same size but it also spreads fertilizer and uh, we're playing with three stage fertilization on so yeah it would kind of make sense to have one that will spread some fertilizer as well. Um, so I definitely think that's going to go. Actually I think we can put that on the front of the tractor and drag it down. Um, we've also got follow me installed so we will be able to get the pickup to follow the tractor down. Um, how the driver of that is going to get back, although I think there is a jump seat. Yeah, there's a jump seat, so you can come back with us. Um, I do want to kind of keep it that way. I don't want to uh, be teleporting around the place, unless it's maybe to purchase a field or something like that. Um, so I just think it's a little bit weird um, to be teleporting around. So we've actually got a uh, water bowser, or water tanker, or whatever the hell you want to call it. Uh, we've got a slurry spreader and a small little um, animal trainer. Um, we can purchase fuel on site here, which is kind of handy, um, since there's no petrol station. Although I do have a mod installed. <laughs> I'm going to be saying that quite a bit. Um, I have a mod installed that allows us to place um, a fuel pump uh, somewhere on the land. And we also have um, one of these side sling mowers, uh, probably better on the case, but I think we might need some more weights uh, on the front. It's a little bit heavy, definitely heavy on the massy. It tends to rock from side to side as we're trying to uh, maneuver it around, and I'm just worried I'd flip over. Um, actually, yeah, this is the back end of the cow shed. Um, that's our slurry tank right there. Again, we've got the interactive control. And there's actually a piece of interactive control down here. This is all handled automatically, like the slurry is pumped in and the manure is deposited automatically as well. So we don't have to uh, bother mucking that out. Um, another gold nugget. Uh, not sure if I'm going to go crazy and um, gather up all the gold nuggets. Um, just because you do get a million euro if you grab a hundred of them. And I'd rather kind of try and slog along and um, do it for myself. Now this is something that an awful lot of people seem to miss out on and I think it's absolutely awesome. It just looks like a little bit of um, a grate or something in the ground or a little bit of a texture or something like somewhere you don't load. If you're kind of looking around you'll notice that there's a very definite line there. Um, so you head up to your manure pit and you'll notice there's this little button and you just press it like that and the hydraulics start to go off and we get a ramp uh, that rises up out of the ground so you'd obviously pull your trailer in here or your um, muck spreading wagon and uh, you'll be able to get up here with a, a nice front loader or something like that and it just makes tipping into the trailer a little bit easier. I think that's an incredible little touch and I think it's, um, you know, it's really thinking about things. I, I really love it. I love all these little touches. Um, and it does make work so much easier. This yard is incredible. Um, so yeah, that's just a little thing. I'll try not to um, dwell too long on things like that because um, we are short on time. Uh, it is early spring. We have, actually, I better take a look at the weather forecast. Um, oh yeah, actually, we're getting a good spring. Anyway, we better get down to the shop. So I am going to, I may try to get rid of that cedar at the same time. And we're going to get this equipment sorted. I'm just going to disconnect this and uh, hop back in. And I'm going to connect up with that and that and get the pickup ready as well. And then we're going to head off down to the shops. Selling you, I'm gonna switch off the engine as well, actually. Um, and you see, that's another um, thing that's brought to us by the mod. It kind of holds the, the steering. Oh, I would love a steering wheel to be honest. Um, it would make actually checking for gold nuggets now, it would actually make the game uh, so much easier to play. But um, well, it's coming up to Christmas at the moment, and the prices for things like that are not going to be great. So, yeah, well, oh, yeah, we're just returning this, and we have a pickup over here. I can hear it rumbling. So 22,000 euro. Um, what is it if we try to sell it through the garage just out of curiosity? 
22,000 euro. Maybe it's because it's down here. Um, I definitely thought that you would get slightly less um, if you... Um, you need to go back into the trigger. Uh, if, if you um, sold it there rather than sending it through the menu, but maybe it's because it's in the uh, actual box itself. Um, now that we've come down here, uh, we probably should pick up some equipment. Um, so let's start up. Uh, we don't actually have the front loader, so if I wanted to do some hay bales um, for sheep, which I'm kind of thinking of getting into pretty early on, uh, just for the wool, um, be pretty tricky to load up. Um, we're probably just going to lease a plow, or maybe we'll buy it. We'll buy it outright. I think we might buy it outright. Um, decisions, decisions. Okay, we'll go for the cool. Um, I've decided. We could actually buy it outright. Um, no, we're going to lease it because we don't we don't have a huge amount of land and it's going to be costing us uh, money while we have it. Um, so we're just going to lease that. And Okay, we've got it. Um, I should probably... No, I'm going to wait to lease my cedar. Um... And then we're going to get the sheep sorted out pretty quickly. I'm going to get the case onto this thing uh, for the work, but this thing should be able, the massy should be able to pull it back to the yard if we can uh, actually line ourselves up some way straight. And uh, back a little more. It's so weird um, trying to do stuff like this with the keyboard. I'm getting better at it, but um, uh, steering wheel and pedals. Uh, will be better. Of course, I probably embarrassed myself completely then uh, by not being able to drive um, very well. How is that looking? Yeah, it's not actually um, too bad. I don't know if we could actually pull up with this thing. Um, probably not. We'll leave it up to the case uh, to do the heavy lifting. Um, so I'm going to hit my cruise control once again. Um, it's so much easier than trying to steer and accelerate and brake uh, with one hand. Um, I should actually get a controller. Um, it'll be cheaper than getting pedals. Uh, there is a nice set of uh, steering wheel pedals and um, a sort of a set with um, a joystick or and a little console as well that comes with it. Um, and I've hit something again, have I? Yeah, I've ploughed into the gate. Uh, literally and figuratively. Um, so, yeah, try to avoid that crazy traffic. Um, are we sticking out into the road with this thing? Uh, not really. I don't think it goes... Um, is there a road mode type thing on this? I know some of them can be kind of... Um, dropped. Uh, maybe we could. I know it switches it around. No, it, it doesn't look like it comes with. Um, we probably should turn it the other way. Um, I know for some of the bigger ones, you can drop it onto the road with that wheel. And yeah, that traffic is um, getting mighty pissed off at me back there. Um, then again, I am messing around with the plow in the middle of the public highway. Might actually end up selling that um, forage wagon as well. It's a little bit small um, for what I need. Um, I am going to be cutting grass at the castle. Um, which might seem a little bit silly um, and a little bit cheaty or something. But if you look at the map, which is... Um, so if you look at the map, this is the castle area here. We don't have a hell of a lot of land. Um, we've got a little bit in here. It's difficult to mow in here because, I mean, there's other areas in here, but they're, it's a little bit cheaty to get to them. I think there's like a crash barrier here or something that you kind of glitch through. Uh, there's a lot of trees in there, but the castle area, Looking at the location in real life, there are round bales, uh, if you go on Google. Some of the pictures of the area show uh, round bales in that field. So, uh, And we've also got a farm track that leads up uh, along here. Uh, the farm track that I came in on is actually uh, coming down from field 20. I really want field 20 as well. Uh, we're going to buy up uh, 19 and 17 as soon as possible. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to sow. I'm probably going to sow some cereal crop down here and maybe some grass here. Not entirely sure. 
As I say, we've got a lot of grass, but it's, you know, if we do have cattle, we can kind of pretend we're grazing them out there a little bit as well. Um, but yeah, there's a track and everything running right up there, and there's good access. I'm not glitching through hedges or anything. That's just an actual track that runs up there with a gate somewhere up there and a big wide entrance here as well. So it's, you know, it's less cheaty if people are worried about cheating than going into an area like this uh, off the edge of the map behind a hedge and trying to find a way through. Um, so I'm going to be cutting uh, grass up there. But that is going to be, as I say, a long way off. Uh, it's probably going to be summer. We'll probably try and get two cuts, uh, one of hay and one of silage. Um, our silage pits are over there. But ho Okay, I had disconnected that and I'm now plowing the concrete. Um, I think I'm going to have uh, a few questions uh, to ask about that uh, when we return it. Um, well, we could say the field is a bit stony. Um, uh, nobody saw anything. Um, so yeah, I think I will end up selling that as well. Should I sell it today? Will I bring it down to the shop? Okay, we'll do what I was said I was going to do originally, and I'm going to grab a trailer load of, well it's not actually going to be a trailer load, it probably wouldn't even fill that uh, smaller trailer, but we're going to hitch on to this one here, just back up to it without doing any damage, um, I do tend to be quite clumsy uh, with this, so... Yeah, I expect me to be smashing into a lot of stuff. That wasn't actually too bad, no? Um, okay, so we'll head on over. Um, we can take off our tarp uh, by pressing N. I really like that. I like the idea of the tarp. I think there is a manual um, a mod that does manual um, tarp removal. and What's the opposite of removal? Putting it on? I don't know. Um, so we are going to uh, pull up to the trigger, um, so it's that smaller pipe there, uh, this is our, that big silo there is our fermentation silo, whereas this thing is for our grains and that, uh, basically we can put chaff and grass in there and uh, ferment it into silo, so we've got lots of options really, um, probably not another gold nugget. Um, Probably not going to, um, is that lined up? Oh, that's lined up pretty well. Um, yeah, I'm probably not going to go with bale silage. It's pretty expensive. Um, and as I say, we have the silage pit over there. I've also got a silage uh, compactor mod installed. Um, and we're probably going to hire one of those. Uh, that's 5,000. Okay, we're going to fill up with that. Uh, what is the volume of this? I think it's about 15, isn't it? Yeah, it's about 15. Uh, we might as well put the pipe back just in case we come in um, and clip it later on and knock it off because it is a little bit lower than the other one. Um, so we have to head down to the transport. Um, I'm just going to pull through this shed. I might actually. And that was a huge lag spike. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Um, I just want to cover that over as well just in case we lose any of it on the road. And we're going to head down to the transport area. It is the transport or is it the mill? Um, I think it is transport. Yeah, the transport. And we shall see how much we got from that. Um, okay, 7,300. Well, 7, nearly 7,400. That's not bad, actually, uh, considering we only had a third of a trailer. Um, the oilseed rape is going to make us a fortune, especially if we wait for a big demand in, I think it's winter. Um, I think seasons kind of alters the markets as well. Um, so canola. Yeah, so kind of in the winter, the price seems to have gone up. I don't know if this last year or this year. I think it's this year coming, which is a bit weird. I'm going to pretend it's last year. Um, so kind of in the winter, there should be pretty decent price and if we're lucky enough to get a great demand um, sometime over the winter uh, we're probably going to sell then um, so we're going to have a lot of money uh, just lying around tied up in stock uh, for a while um, I'm not entirely sure how to get back out of here I don't actually spend a lot of time over here bar selling the wool um, 
And I have totally come the wrong way, I think. Um, yep. We've just come into the car park and we're totally lost. Anyway, I'm going to get back onto the main road. Uh, get back up onto the farm. And uh, we'll see... Uh, I'm just going to drive across these spaces. There's nothing parked in them. And uh, we'll see about buying ourselves some fields. And we'll drop that there. Um, now, as I say, we need to um, sort ourselves out with a bit of a loan um, to try and buy up some of these fields. I like to have those two fields, as I say, either side on the uh, back. Um, the field icon for this one, I think, is up here. Um, I say it's tilled and ready to sow at the moment. Um, would be nice to kind of plow it. I'm thinking of putting wheat in this, though I have done grass. Um, in my other playthrough, and it's going to be a bit weird. Um, changing things over that pond also it looks like it's going to be one of those uh, free water points i haven't been able to get it to work though um so maybe it isn't maybe it's just optimistic thinking so we are probably going to be paying um 71,000. okay i'm going to max out the loan um and see how much we're working with uh, we'll probably pay back some of it that we don't use uh so 281 um just because I, oh, he wants to do sowing. I can't really let that happen. If I want the field for myself, it was um, slurry spreading or plowing or something, I'd be happy to kind of do that. Uh, 71,000 for a field um, that we may end up regret spend, regretting spending. Um, or at least I'm going to regret spending it maybe at some point. Yeah, so this, I don't actually think it is a water fill point, even though I really wish it was. Um, I may try at it again, um, just to see if I can get it to work. And uh, we also want this field. Um, I say it does make sense to have them. They kind of surround the yard. Um, so it's kind of a bit strange that we don't start off with them. Although we do have uh some decent equipment and we've got access to a huge amount of grass up the way as well so um and we do have our own um mix station so you can't really complain about having to spend a little bit extra uh i actually can't even it's too late now um i may actually save the game now as well so there's no going back um I'm not actually sure what that mission was. I'm going to be watching that in editing and slapping myself in the head uh, for not uh, paying more attention because I know when it's going to be a uh, slurry spreading mission and I just completely blanked it. Um, I'm not actually sure if it was. Um, anyway, we have got uh, three fields now and we're down to 150,000. Well, we're actually up to 150,000, but all of that is out on loan. And uh, we need to start making some money uh, to get that back. Um, so our most valuable field is that big one over there. And it may be worth starting the ploughing. Uh, we're going to uh, line up uh, some way straight. And I'm going to uh, start ploughing. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to hire a worker yet or not to do this. Um, so it may turn into a time lapse. Um, we'll see how we get on anyway. So I've gotten a little bit done, as you can see. Um, I've actually taken a break from recording in real life, and I'm just back. And I have actually spotted that the weather uh, is about to turn a little bit wet. Um, it's probably not going to last all day, and it's going to be cloudy mostly tomorrow. But there could be some more rain in there as well. And uh, I am kind of anxious uh, to get the sheep started. And I don't really want to be doing uh, work with hay uh, while it's raining. And I also want to kind of get the seeds, um, or at least the grain, down to the um, down to the uh, dressing seed dressing station uh, down by the animal market. And so what I think I'm going to do is get a helper involved here. Um, okay, actually. Okay, yeah, we have got to uh, put a stop to this straight away. Um, okay. 
I have installed a mod, uh, another mod from Morgley, um, that is supposed to um, provide an alternative helper. Uh, the problem is I have absolutely no idea how to use this, um, so I'm going to switch it off for now. I'm going to try and figure out how this works, because all I've managed to get him to do is to drive um, in circles. Uh, so we're just going to use, uh, I'm just going to get this rolling again. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to use the standard help for now until I can figure out how to um, get that to work. So we're going to let him go off and plow there. I will need to come back. Um, the field is a bit of an unusual shape up towards that corner there on that pole there. That electricity pole does cause him a little bit of difficulty. So I will have to do a little bit of plowing again myself. And... Um, yeah, he's doing a reasonable job so far. And possibly best not to walk across behind the tractor while it's moving. Anyway, we're going to go back to the yard and uh, get some... We're going to jump into the Massey and we're going to... Okay, he's missing a huge chunk of the field there. Not entirely sure why that is. Anyway, we can tidy up after he's done. Um, he'll probably start to work it out a little bit better. I usually find he's quite good on this field, but um, anyway, we'll see how he gets on. Um, and as I say, I can tidy up myself afterwards. Whoa. Um, don't want to bang into that old combine. Yeah, so I'm going to... Um, I think, actually, we should order up some bales first off. <clears throat> Straw bales, hay bales. We are going to probably go with the square bales. They're a little bit easier to handle, and they're also a little bit cheaper. Um, I'm assuming that might be to do with the netting that is on those bales, as opposed to just a little bit of uh, baling twine that's on these. So we're going to buy a pallet of those, and we're also probably going to need a, a trailer to transport them. Uh, that'll be under baling technology, I think. We might as well we might as well purchase it because we're going to be using that quite a bit as um, the year goes on and we also, I don't think we have um, any bale handling equipment, uh, bale spikes and the like um, indeed we don't uh, so what we need to do, we actually need to get this um, up to the sheep farm as well for water um, so I may drag that up now and uh, while we're down around that area of the map uh, we can pick up the bales and get them transported in as well yeah because the sheep farm is kind of close to the shop down there while we're heading down that way we might as well drag down the um, the water tank as well and get that in there ready to go for the sheep uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to pick them up myself um, if I do, it will probably be tomorrow in game. Um, if I choose to have them delivered, I'm not actually sure what the cost is to get them delivered. Um, but if it is reasonable enough, uh, we'll probably do that. Although I would like to mess around with a truck um, delivering them up. But we're probably not going to use that um, little trailer that we have uh, to bring them up just because I think we can only fit something like 10 in there but it'll be still useful um, when we go um, uh, when we come to sell them and uh, we will be selling a few off we're going to try and keep a flock of about a hundred uh, knocking around um, and any extra of course can be sold for extra money um, probably I think, do the prices of livestock change with seasons? I think they do. Uh, let's see, all this. Um, so yeah, it does seem like the prices fluctuate a little bit as time goes on. Um, we do actually have the mod that um, changes the price of the animals anyway, um, which may actually override this entirely. I'm not sure if the mods are compatible or not. Um, we shall see if there is any seasonal variation or not. We're going to grab that as well. Actually, we didn't purchase the bale spike at all, I don't think. Um, which will be in front loaders, I think. Um, yeah. So we're just going to go for the normal bale spike for now. Uh, we've got the front loader attached. 
so let's grab our water tanker, water bowser, whatever you want to call it, and I'm going to fill it up uh, over at the tap over there. Um, or it may be worth trying the pond once again, just to see if I can get it to uh, actually work, but I don't think we can actually draw water out of it. Um, it would be great if we could, because it would mean um, a supply of free water, rather than having to pay for it all the time, um, for the livestock. I might run over and try it once again. Let's get that all done. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm I'm giving up on that. Uh, I don't think we can actually take water from there. Um, I'm not even sure if we are intended to be able to take water from there or not. But if it's just a broken trigger, or if I'm hitting the wrong spot, um, or whether it's a case that it's 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 not going to be implemented at all or not implemented properly, I'm not entirely sure. But we definitely don't seem to be able to draw water from there. So we're going to get up here. Uh, this one is actually marked as we. Um, come in and there's nothing on the map about that one either so I'm going to assume uh, that we're not intended to draw water from here so we're going to try and get the water from the buy point over here uh, I think there's another one of those in one of the fields on the way down um, we're not close enough so that's the other thing yeah we may not have just been finding the right spot for the trigger but um, short of submerging the tractor in the pond, I'm not really sure where it's going to be. Um, I've tried up there before, but I haven't been able to get anything to, uh, to come of it, so uh, we're just going to pay for water out of this, and that'll do for the uh, sheep. And here we are, at the sheep farm. Um, it's not as big a yard as um, the uh, main yard, but it is uh, nonetheless pretty impressive. Um, so this is the area where our wool pellets will spawn. Um, and this is our feeding area. Again, we've got lots of these interactive controls. Uh, the curtains here open down. We're actually going to leave them down for now because uh, it's kind of easier to see in when you're in uh, third person trying to uh, clean out the, the spillage from their feed. Um, and over here is their water trough. Um, we're obviously not going to be able to fill it now because we don't have the sheep yet. And their little pasture area is out the back here. Uh, they actually get quite a bit of space. Um, it's obviously nothing here at the moment. Um, I think only 10-ish sheep are visible. I think that's kind of a standard on maps. Give or take it, maybe maybe more, maybe less on some maps. Uh, but you're not, if you put a hundred sheep in, you're not going to see one hundred of them uh, wandering around in here. You're only going to see a couple of them, um, just for the effect. Um, and that's the gate there into the uh, pasture area, and this is our unloading point. It's not animated like the other one. It's just um, we just simply put them in. I don't think that opens. Does it? I don't think it does. No. No, it doesn't open. Um, I actually wonder if the twins are in. Um, I call them the twins. They're uh, oh, they are. Uh, they they got here early. <laughs> they seem to hold the uh, sheep in a kind of an unusual way. It's it's actually kind of funny. Um, but yeah, they uh, apparently are shearing the sheep for us. Um, so we get our wool again. We've got another um, storage area in here. I don't think I'll be storing the hay in here. It just seems a bit weird to be storing it in here. Uh, we may store seed and things like that in here. And we'll obviously store our wool pellets. We might pop them up there or kind of leave them in the corner or something out of the way. Um, there's two ways in. This door is a lot bigger if we wanted to back a trailer or something in here. So we've got that door as well. I didn't actually notice. Does this door open? No, but there is a gap at the top. Um, so it's probably been slightly misplaced or something. Uh, or maybe it is supposed to open. Um, anyway, we're not going to worry about that for now. We're going to close down that shed again. And we're going to drop uh, the water tanker. I suppose it's probably better to drop it over somewhere in that area over there. Um, start the engine. it over and um, ba yeah so I think we'll just back it into one of these little bays here um, try 
get myself set up and uh, I'm put it in that one there and I'll probably store the hay in here as well once we get it um, drawn up here um, and yes there's our bales and our trailer and our bale fork uh, so what's the best way to do this um, which way are the bales running? They're running back and over, I think. Uh, it sounds like something crazy. The bales are moving. They're not running anyway. Uh, what I mean is these are the ends of the bales. And uh, this is the long side. Um, okay, so we're going to pull this trailer forward a little bit. Uh, we might as well hook onto this um, bale spike here first. Just give it a nudge to straighten it up. Now, as to where to put the trailer, um, it might be best if we kind of pull it, just pull it forward, um, just to give us some space to actually access the bales and get them onto the trailer. Um, yeah, if we pull it forward over here, I might be able to get them from the front side uh, I would approach them from this side maybe and pop them in here or should we um yeah we might grab them from the front and bring them around at the left side there is our how is our worker getting on actually I'm actually gonna teleport across to him um he's actually doing pretty well I think that he might be doing a better job of plowing than I am um which wouldn't be hard um yeah no I think th this area here is mine and uh, the rest is his. He is missing a few bits up the top there and he seems to have missed a little bit down the bottom. Uh, a lot of this was me missing um, small little areas. Um, so he's actually doing a pretty decent job, a better job than me. Um, of course fertilization we need to um, get that taken care of as well. Um, that's probably going to come with um, no field at all has been fertilized. Uh, apart from this little garden up here. Anyway, I'm procrastinating once again and getting absorbed with the map. I'm going to get back to our um, trailer and get our bales and the engines cut out. And uh, we're going to pull forward just a little more. Um, shouldn't be turning my neck uh, that steeply either. We're going to go and disconnect this trailer. And I'm not going to make you sit through... Um, me stacking up these bales in uh, real time. I'm probably going to time lapse the whole thing. I do like to do it from uh, inside cab view. Um, it just it makes it a little bit easier. Well, depending I suppose on the tractor or the machine that you're using. Uh, this tractor's got kind of great view. Um, wouldn't enjoy doing it with the case. Uh, it's got that uh, big exhaust pipe sticking out, but. Um, yeah, it's going to be pretty easy with this. We should probably put a bit of weight on the back of the tractor. These bales are a little bit too heavy uh, to be lifting, and it does tend to tip the tractor forward a little bit, but um, I'm not going to worry about that too much. I'm going to drive slowly and carefully, and hopefully we won't flip over. Um, I don't think it'll flip us, but um, it would probably be better to have um, something uh, on the back just to balance things out. As I say, it does tend to tip forward quite a bit. Um, quite a bit indeed. Uh, I'm probably putting too much strain on the front. Um, but anyway, I'm going to try and get these uh, loaded up without knocking them to the ground and hopefully it comes out as a half decent time lapse. Let's go.
again. So we've arrived at the sheep farm. Uh, that drive may have taken a little bit longer than expected. Um, I ran into some difficulties. Uh, my favourite fence got in the way once again. And uh, because the bales, I had them stacked um, perfectly well. I decided to catch on it. And uh, the only way to get free was to uh, unstrap them and uh, pull the trailer across, which kind of knocked a couple of them uh, out of alignment, which is going to make for an interesting unloading. Uh, the rain is most definitely on the way, and it is a beautiful sunset, actually. Um, so we must be looking west now, which is interesting. Um, or not interesting, as the case may be. Uh, so, how to do this? Um, should I pull the trailer in there or not? Um, it might be worth backing the trailer in there if I could achieve that. Um, very much easier said than done. Uh, maybe if we just pull it up uh, along this wall here and we can load the bales in there. I don't think they decay uh, in these sheds. I think it's mostly if they're left on the fields or on a grass texture. At least that's my experience. I haven't noticed uh, bales decaying in sheds or on uh, the gravel texture at least, so perhaps it is something to do with the um, the texture that the bales are left on, um, as to how that works out. I'm not entirely sure how it works out, whether they're uh, protected or not, uh, so we're going to get that off. Uh, and the lights are coming on, and the rain, as I say, is fast approaching. Um, so I'm just going to get these bales unstrapped uh, as best I can. That's not looking too secure. It's borrowed straight through the bale. Okay, and uh, we've disconnected the trainer, have we? Yeah, we have. Uh, so I'm going to try and get these loaded up, uh, or unloaded rather, and uh, into the shed for the night. Um, and try and get it done before uh, it actually starts raining. So, um,. I'm not actually sure how long this episode is, has been, or will be, because I haven't obviously edited it at this point. Um, but I think uh, that with today wrapping up, I think we're going to try and uh, squeeze an episode a day per... Each day in the game will probably be an episode. And uh, since we've come to the close of this day, although I might put two days into some other ones, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but anyway, for now... I think I'm going to say thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, you have been watching Bloomer Brown on YouTube, and I will see you next time.